Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. I decided I have enough parts and I'm going to go ahead and uh, build a uh, little 10 meter amplifier for AM using a pair of 4D32s in parallel and a uh, 7984 Compactron tube to drive it. I'm just going to put a, uh, a voltage uh, control adjustment on the screen of this 7984 so I can control the drive level to the uh, 4D32s. But right now, I just kind of breadboarded this thing up because what I want to do is I want, I'm want i looking for efficiency. I want to start using these uh, switching supplies like for filaments and stuff. So I found this dirt cheap on Amazon. It was like $12.99 you know, or 12.95, and I thought, well, it's five amps, and I calculated if I put the 4D32 uh, two filaments in series to get like 12.6 across both of them, then there's going to be, you know, the voltage drop across each one will be 6.3, and this one's like a 13 whatever volt tube, so if I set them, but it'll work at 12.6, so if I set this thing to 12.6, I should get it, you know, the voltage on all of them and it should be okay but it looks like this little uh, 5 amp supply the initial inrush the surge at startup with the two uh, 4D32s in series just loads it down at startup if it could get past that it would be okay but the light blinks I started with putting these two tubes in series and leaving it before I even plugged this one in the 7984 and uh it just, it was blinking and I just pulled one of the 4D32s out. By the way, these are brand new. They're new old stock. They were never used Raytheons. I got these. These were still like brand new in the uh, package, the box. And so military stuff. And uh, so I know they're good. But anyway, uh, so then I thought, well, let me pull one of them out. Then, it, then I plugged it in the wall and it's, the light came on solid like it's supposed to. So, well, let me go ahead and try the uh, 7984 to make sure it powers that one up. This one draws less than 600 milliamps on the filament. These, the 4D32s draw what? They draw, I've already calculated this out, they draw uh, 3.75 amps. So, if you divide that by two for, you know, putting them in series, it's like, what, 1.875. And then the uh, compactron draws what? Point. 0.58 which is 580 milliamps so so I did that and I plugged it back in and it powers up the compactron tube fine and I was able to set the voltage if I run this up all the way I get about 13.18 volts on the voltmeter and uh, but I've set it at 12.6 because that's where these guys need to run but it's obvious this little supply is not it just doesn't have the oomph to get it going because when it's trying to power up these tubes when you first plug it in the wall and it initializes it's seeing a dead short now I may be able to put one of those anthanol surge protection those in, in rush things that'll actually compensate but I don't know what the resistance will be after it's in line you know if, if it's I, I won't have I want enough I want to be able to get at least 12.6 volts across both these tubes they'll work it you know at, at 12 volts but if I have to that's what I'll, what I'll do but I think I'm going to have to bump, bump this up to the 10 amp supply and see what that does but it may still go back into limiting so I'm going to have to figure this out but I know a lot of people that use these switching supplies to power up the filaments and the key is to just get a big one so anyway but that's kind of what I plan on doing I, once I figure this out then I'll know because I can mount this on the bottom side of the chassis in one corner and you know it'll, it'll be way more efficient. I, that's the thing. I, I want to try to start using these switching supplies to power stuff up. So basically the, what I'm going to do on this compactron on the grid input, it's going to be grid driven and these two are going to be grid driven of course because the uh, suppressor grid are all tied to the cathode on this tube and on these tubes. So that's what you have to do. It's going to be a grid driven amp but what I found is I thought well I, I found these like 50 watt and 100 watt uh, 50 ohm non-inductive resistors that look like big FETs you just heat sink to the chassis and I can just put one of those at the input to dissipate the extra power going into the grid of this thing so if I want to run 5 watts or 12 watts it should be okay and there's this is a 46 watt compactron tube so it's going to have you know I think even with putting low drive because all the the majority of the power is going to get dissipated across that resistor but it still should have enough to amplify the signal to drive these two tubes these tubes won't take that much it's probably you know 
they're, it's, they're going to be, it's going to be the RF signal is going to be, you know, driving the grid positive just a little bit, I think, when I'm, when I'm done. It's, I'm probably going to set it up in AB1 or AB2. I don't know if Class BC will work or not. It might. But I'm going to set it to where, you know, I can get the, I think I can get 125 watts carrier out of these, a setup like this on 10 meters and not have a problem. So, uh, and a lot of people say, well, they think these tubes have too much capacitance, you know, for uh, for uh, for 10 meters, but they really don't. I mean, I, I looked at the spec sheet, and if you look at it, it says, it clearly says in here, if you read through this, these things, one of them will work up to 60 megacycles, 60 megahertz at full power, full power out. So if you just, well, wait a minute, you know, you know, if you take 60 megacycles, divide, if you put two of them in parallel, and as long as the grid leads, I'm going to make sure the grid leads are as short as freaking possible. I'm going to turn the tube sockets to where I can get the shortest run across from grid to grid to, you know, put them in parallel. And I think, you know, uh, if I keep that and I use the, you know, I, I can just put a tank circuit on the output of this to, you know, drive the grids of these and it'll, that'll be, it'll just be a little parallel tank circuit, you know, parallel tank circuits, what I'm going to do. So, and that, that'll work great. You just couple it from the, the plate with like a 0.001 cap to the tank circuit and a 0.001 cap to the grid of these things. And that should work fine. And I can just, that way I'll have the perfect match on the output of this tube and, and these tubes here. And I won't be overdriving this thing with the, uh, with that, that 50 ohm non-inductive load that'll just handle, you know, the power from the radio. Cause this doesn't take much power to get power out. I think it's what, two watts drive max. But of course, I'm not going to need 46 watts to the grids of these things. So I'm going to have, even with the, with the low drive input on the grid after it dissipates across that resistor, I should have enough gain to drive these tubes. And, but that's what I'm going to find out. So this is, this is a really easy project. I already have the plate transformer. I'm going to pull it out of another old, uh, chicken band linear that I have, and that should work fine. So, but right now I just got to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and probably buy the 10 amp supply. I wanted that this thing is tiny. I thought, well, the 10 amp supply is about this much longer. Maybe the 10 amp will get this thing going, but I'll find out, you know, but in, in the end, I may have to put a, uh, a surge thing in series with the, with the line with one of the leads to, to compensate for that. As long as I can find one that when it gets after it's on, it goes past it and it works, that the resistance is very low. Because otherwise, I'd have, even with the supply cranked up all the way max, the voltage may not be high enough. But I'll figure it out. I think maybe the 10 amp supply will, uh, will should compensate. I also, the only, way, only thing I can do is just try it. Then if that doesn't work, I'll put the, the series uh, in rush thing in there and see what happens. Amp that all makes them, I can get like a 5 amp in rush thing and see, see how that goes. So anyway, uh, that's the story on this, but uh, I should be able to get this amp. Like I said, I should be able to build it to where I get about 125 watts carrier out and then the rest all modulation on, on the peak envelope power. And that, that should really help me out on 10 meters. I already, I already have the tubes. I had to order one socket. I only had one of these old Johnson sockets. And the one I had was this original one in the box. And it's kind of a different color than the uh, the newer production one that I got, but they're both, it's the same socket. They're both the same Johnson part number. One of them was just one of the original ones from the fifties. And this was one of the ones they made probably in the, uh, the sixties or early seventies until they quit making them. So anyway, that's uh, the story on this. And, uh, next, next time I, uh, once I finally get this, the right supply and get it to where it's powering up the, uh, 40, 32 filaments, we'll, uh, we'll make another video. 73s, this is W5HRO.